Welcome back to another episode of the Authentic Man podcast. I'm your host, David Chambers. Um, I'm a men's dating, relationship and intimacy coach. I've been working for men with over, for over 15 years now. Um, and today's episode is about something that really, really was in my life for a long, long time. Is this kind of idea of looking for the perfect woman, you know? You can't find the perfect woman and the perfect relationship and feeling kind of doomed. Um, and this was definitely something that I experienced in between relationships and at times, you know, feeling like I settled for relationships that weren't quite right for me, even actually. Um, and I emphasize the feeling that I did that, um, not necessarily that was the truth. Um, so yeah, why is it that you can't find the, the perfect woman? And I'm going to be really straight with you. She doesn't exist. The perfect woman, the one you have in your mind with, you know, all these these kind of perfections. It's a, like an imaginary idea. It's like, a, as I say to some of my clients, it's like you've fitted together all the perfect things you think would work for you based on all the past partners you've had or the, the things you've seen on TV or whatever it may be. You create this kind of like cyborg in your mind. You know, you think it's like Terminator. You can just kind of plug and play traits and body parts and so forth. There's a certain level of like, um, let be really honest with you, like like an immaturity, you know, like imagining that there's this perfect person out there that will just complete you. And then when you're with them, your life and your relationship will be easy. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. The truth is, is that, you know, you meet somebody who has their own unique imperfections, um, wounding and trauma and difficulty and you kind of make a relationship work you know based on willingness and effort so I'm going to start with the the, the woman part is like we often have a lot of these um, kind of traits or um, especially looks like I would want her to look like this you know hair colors body types and so forth and we use this as like a, a thing to filter through women. And I understand it, right? You want to be attracted to the person that you're with. That totally makes sense. But as I say, again, I say this to many of my clients, is like the size of your your partner's breasts are not going to mean that you have a, a well-connected and emotionally intimate relationship where there's support. That is not really a factor in the most important aspects of your relationship. Let's be honest. And often you can get stuck and obsessing about these little points like, oh, she was really nice, but, you know, she wasn't tall enough or she was really nice, but, you know, she didn't look that nice in heels or whatever it may be. And these things are actually keeping you from intimacy. There are ways in which you avoid the potential pain of a relationship or that you avoid the depth of a relationship by obsessing over things that are really meaningless in the grand scheme of a relationship. Right. So the perfect woman doesn't quite exist. Or maybe you're finding yourself obsessing about small things, about the imperfections in her that mean you can't fully connect with somebody. And this is a bit of a mental exercise, right? Is actually like finding out like, why am I so obsessing about these small things? What's the payoff? You know, what do I get from obsessing about the fact that, I don't know, one of her toenails is a bit funky or something? Like, what do I make it mean about her or what would I make it mean about me if I was with someone like this? You know, that's often a, a question that can be very revealing, you know, because we might make it mean that, you know, if I'm with a woman and she isn't like the most beautiful woman in the room, then that means that I'm not a high status man or I'm not good enough. And all these sort of narratives that are really just untrue. It's just things we've kind of projected onto ourselves that can often stop us from having the sort of intimacy we like. So it's kind of coming home to this idea that, you know, the perfect woman doesn't exist. And actually imperfections is what make us unique and interesting, you know? And also to ask yourself, like, maybe where are you not looking at your own imperfections and working on those and acknowledging those and accepting those? Because it, it may be a reflection for you that there's parts about yourself, parts about your personality, your behavior, your habits that you find difficulty in accepting. And you're projecting that lack of acceptance onto women, right? Or, you know, there might be an element of perfectionism, the way you do certain things in your life. And that might be, again, it's something for you to start to bring some acceptance to. Because ultimately, you know, across the board is, you know, I've met many men in this area. It's like, you know, the perfect woman doesn't exist. And it has to be a case of that, you know, one of the most important things, I think, to create a good 
you were looking for in someone is actually a willingness to work at relationship because a lot of people don't have a willingness they just want to like want it to be easy and then when it gets hard they want to jump out you know get out of it so coming back to like what's really important to you what are the kind of non-negotiables that you have and you can't have a massive long list of non-negotiables because that's just not how it works in relationship because some of the things that you might have on the non-negotiable list might actually be not that important you know I can say that when I was making my list of non-negotiables one of them was like I didn't want to be with anyone who hadn't traveled independently alone um, and then I met also and he was a, I remember when speaking to her and she you know she had a very long corporate career and never really taken a break to like travel in the same way that I had multiple times it was a real kind of thing for me like mm, you know she hasn't traveled in the way that I have I want someone who's independent so that you know when I want to go on holiday on my own I can do that and and if she wants to do that she can do that too or if we were to travel together I'm not feeling like I'm looking after someone and so forth and when I kind of sat down with that, why well, I started to realize that underneath it, what I actually wanted was someone who was independent. I wanted someone who could, you know, do things, would happily do things alone and so forth. Right. That was actually, and also allow me to, not allow me, but would be comfortable with me doing things on my own and going off on my own. And then some of that reflected back to me is like, oh, I'm not asking for what I want. You know, this is where this exercise is really powerful because we start to dig in and we start putting this responsibility on someone else like they need to be all these things to mitigate so we don't have to ask for what we want right so there's a really important point there as well around the non-negotiables is using them as a mirror of ourselves so the non-negotiables shouldn't be particularly long it should be you know a core group of values and ideas and ways of living that are really important to you um so so that when you do meet women you're talking to them you're able to kind of discern you know and obviously not being too judgmental because sometimes we jump to conclusion too quickly, but actually being curious to find out these things. And another part is also, and we covered this in an episode with uh, Mike Campbell actually a while ago, it's like, are you these things? Do you embody some of these things that you want in someone? You know, because I think a lot of guys are looking for this woman that's got all these amazing, amazing traits, but they're not willing to do the work themselves. They're not willing to do the work to kind of heal and be present and be deeply aware um, and so forth. So that, you know, the sort of woman that they're writing these non-negotiables about would actually be attracted to them. You know, that's also a really important part. And not to get downhearted about it. It's like, okay, what do I need to do? Do I need to go to therapy? Do I need to get some coaching to move me forward in these areas of my life to help me with my business or whatever it may be? You know, not to say you have to have everything sorted before you meet someone, but it's like, are you trying to improve yourself as well? Like, and are you really dedicated to it? Or is there anywhere in your life that you're kind of avoiding improving because, you know, it's hard or difficult? And then onto this kind of perfect relationship piece. And I kind of touched on this before. It's like relationships take work they're not going to be perfect effortlessly, right? You're going to have to com learn to communicate, learn to express your feelings, learn to know what your feelings are to have your relationship be the way you want it to. Learn what your needs are. This is a very common one for men we struggle with is to know what our needs are. Like, do I have needs? Of course you have needs. But it's like learning actually what they are and communicating those in a way that your partner can digest and hear, right? And this is really important. And as you notice, a lot of this stuff isn't about what you need to do to meet the woman it's about who you need to be to meet this sort of woman and create this relationship because too often we put the attention outside of us thinking that we need to find this thing outside but actually it's like are we doing the internal work ourselves and you might be sitting there going oh yeah I'm doing it and I'm like well are you you know let's be really honest like I work with men a lot and they come to me and like oh I've done all this work and then we work together for like a month and they're like man God, I haven't gone near any of this sort of stuff, you know. I haven't touched any of this kind of deeper stuff where I'm starting to really see how I'm behaving or how I'm being or how I'm assuming in my dating life and relationships. And we're like, yeah, now we're into this real work that's going to change your life and how you show up in the relationships. And I start to see them asking for what they want or changing their relationships and experiencing more of the feelings and um, sensations and experiences that they really want to experience in their dating life or relationships. A lot of it comes for us. So as we've ascertained, the perfect woman doesn't really exist, but we can find someone we can create, you know, or find a woman who is really, you know, not to you, not in this way, but like ticking a lot of the boxes, to, you know, that embodies our non-negotiable values and ways of living and way of being, right? 
but also being flexible, right? And seeing that sometimes we might put things down that are a reflection of our own insecurities or our own wounding and actually diving into those, right? Doing the work to dive into those and just discern what's really at the core of that. And then with the perfect relationship is seeing that a relationship takes work to create it to be perfect from ourselves, you know, the level of awareness and consciousness and presence to bring to it. And it's not all about, you know, we just get together with someone great and it should automatically work because you need to, you have to do some relational work, you know, with yourself and them together. And that's part of being in a good relationship. And I see this with so many couples that me and also work with is they've never done relational work, like how you relate to another person and how you project onto another person. And, you know, when we've been with them for a few months, their relationships start to transform because they've never done this sort of work. So it's like knowing that there's going to be some work to do and being willing to do that because, you know, I'm going to be really honest with you, nearly all the couples that me and also have worked with, it's always been the woman that's brought them to the, the coaching. The men have been very resistant normally. So it's like not being one of those guys, being one of the guys who's like, hey, I know I need to work on some stuff. Let's do this together. That is one of the sexiest things, men, you can be. A man who is willing to go, yep, we need to do some work. We, I need to like learn some more about myself and being willing to like go and seek help about that. That will make you incredibly sexy to women. That's why if you ever go to like co-ed workshops, there's almost always more women than men because men are scared to do this sort of work. But when you are one of those men, you become very, very, very magnetic to women. They really desire you. All right. I think that's enough for this week on this topic of the perfect partner and the perfect relationship. But if this has struck a chord and something you really want to get a bit deeper into, feel free to send me a message on Instagram at the authentic man underscore or send me an email and we can talk about email hello at theauthenticman.net. We could talk about how we could work together. I offer a free coaching second session to people if they want to do some something one-to-one. Um, so you can just, you know, shoot me an email and we can set that up. Awesome. Have a wonderful day.